Hello, my name is Leticia Carino, and today I'm going to be talking to you about empowering student voice and inspiring peer feedback with Flipgrid. A little bit of background, um, I'm a physical educator in Phnom Penh. I'm teaching in the ES um, at the International School of Phnom Penh, ISPP. And that's a picture of my family in Spain. Um, my husband and I had two kids. So I was born in Spain, in Madrid. Um, my mom is French and my father is Spanish. And so that's why I thought that was a good picture because you get to see um, both countries. And since I was little, um, I lived in an international background just having parents from different countries. Um, I have to say that I grew up in Spain and I spent most of my childhood in Spain, but um, I did travel a lot to France to see my French family. I consider myself a um, social and curious bird. I thought the word bird was cool. Um, quickly realized that I love traveling and exploring around the world. And so that's what I did in my summers. I was able to travel um, when I was in university and spend a month in a country and just learn about the culture and discover, explore, and really change my mindset for many things. So um, I have lived and worked in different countries, um, started in Spain, I quickly realized that I wanted to do something else and I had the opportunity to go to France to actually finish my studies. That's where I haven't worked in France really. Um, I finished my, my master's um, degree in physical education um, in France. Then I moved to the US where I live um, in Dallas for three years and um, I worked out, uh, I worked out as a um, bilingual um, educator, Spanish and English. And then I moved to the Netherlands and I worked at the International um, at the American School of The Hague. Um, and I spent a year and a half in the Netherlands. And then um, with my husband, we moved to China and I found a job at SAS, Sheko International School, where I spent um, five years. And um, that was a great school to work at. The one in the Netherlands, it was as well. I mean, I feel I was lucky to work in, in different contexts throughout my career. Uh, but it really opened um, my technology skills and I improved. I worked with um, great educators and learned about Twitter and that changed lots of things in my view um, of how to deal with education. And now I'm in Cambodia. This is my third year at the um, International School of Phnom Penh, great school, PYP, IP school. And um, I'm really happy to, to be here right now. So in all these countries, um, I met lots of people and I made good friends and, and learned that relationships matter more than, than we think. Um, that's a picture of a friend of mine from university. It's a very good friend of mine, but that's a recent picture in Laos where we met to, to run a half marathon. That didn't happen because of the virus, but we met there. And um, I haven't seen him before, like for 14 years, because the year before I moved to the US, he moved to Brazil. He actually moved to Argentina first and then to Brazil. And every time he went to Spain, I did not go because it wasn't on summer holidays or winter break. Anyways, we couldn't see each other for a long time. And then he told me he was gonna travel to Asia to see us his wife and um, 
Then he found out. I told him that that weekend I was going to run. And so he came uh, to run with me. So it was great um, to catch up and see how our lives had changed, uh, but how we were feeling like the same, like we had a great relationship. So I think like sometimes we don't see people, but then we get to see them again. And even if we have changed, our relationships are important and, and they really matter. And you never know what's going to happen. So I just wanted to share this picture and, and these thoughts with you. This presentation is about empowering student voice and also about peer feedback. But we're just going to focus on, on student voice and everyone's voice um, first. So why Flipgrid and why um, student voice? But why, why Flipgrid? First of all, so um, to empower student voice and every voice where everyone is a teacher and a learner. To foster relationships during online school, it connects people and educators around the world. Just going to pause for a second before I keep um, saying some whys. I think um, during relation during um, online school, we're missing each other a lot. Um, some teachers are using Zoom. Homeroom teachers are using Zoom um, at school, and we're not using it as um, single subjects. We could, but in my mind, I was just thinking that maybe. That would be too much for, um, especially for the young students, although they love seeing their teacher. If they have to do a Zoom, a Zoom meeting with, with their, with their phys ed um, teacher and the art teacher and the music teacher and the KMI teacher and the Chinese teacher and the French teacher and the learning support and so on, I think it might be a little bit overwhelming. So um, I was thinking of finding a different way to engage the students um, that was in Zoom, although again, I say, and I think that Zoom is very valuable, can be also um, tiring. Another reason is um, that connects people and educators around the world. And we will look at this um, later again, but it really helps through Twitter and um, even with um, teachers at your school. You might connect with them in a different way just because of flipping. There's lots of options and resources um, that are for are free. So you can students learn quickly how to use it and they can video themselves. Um, it supports self self-assessment and student reflection because students have time to do their video and if they don't like it or they, they're not super happy with whatever they did, they can just delete it and do another one. So that makes them think of what they're doing as well. And as I said, it's free for educators now and it's easy to use. So it's really a valuable tool. And it promotes um, student agency, learner agency. So um, Flipgrid has a slideshow where you can use some ideas, and that's one of them, to empower every learner to share their voice and respect the diverse voices of others. I think that's a very good point, not just sharing their voice, but also respecting others, because we are all different and we're all the same. And in international schools, there's lots of cultural background that can be different. Um, and what we say and what we do might affect others. So being respectful, being principled, listening to others and um, just acknowledging what others have to do, that really helps to build the global empathy. I'm just going to look at it promotes learner agency. Uh, the International Baccalaureate Organization in November 2017 gave this um, definition or quote that I'm quoting here. 
agency is the power to take meaningful and intentional action and acknowledge the rights and responsibilities of the individual supporting voice, choice, and ownership. And that's a very important thing that we support, international schools, IB schools, really having the, the learner as the center and having them sharing their voice, giving them choices and supporting them so they feel like they really own their learning. So we want to make their, their learning intentional and meaningful. And that happens when you give students opportunities to do that. And I think uh, this platform is helping to do that. This is also related with the idea of everyone is a teacher and a learner. We learn from each other, we teach others. So using Flipgrid, you can add different topics. And on those topics, students can answer to each other, give comments. So some of the, this is some of the pictures from some of the students. And as you can see, they like it because they can use emojis and different things that in school um, set up or in class might take too long. But right now it's perfect to engage them. So um, how can others be teachers? So we can have a, a wellness topic and students realize what's important. So some of the students were saying like drinking water throughout the day, it's a very important thing to do. Um, also, we were reflecting of our, on our learning and us giving them some ideas to reflect, some uh, questions to think of how their learning was, and they could also listen to each other and get inspired by others. Um, they were sharing their knowledge about the importance of healthy habits. We live in Cambodia, it's really hot, we're talking about drinking water throughout the day, but we also want to make sure that we eat healthy food, um, we get hydrated, not just by drinking water, but maybe also eating vegetables and um, this kind of thing. Another one had to uh, was related with performing and creating a, a dance that they were performing. And we'll look at that again. But students were um, teaching others just by sharing their dances or giving tips to each other um, about their dances as well. So as I said, eating my veggies and fruit is daily and was, a, was a, a thing that students were really, uh, or a sentence that students were really thinking of all the time with this wellness. It was great. Another um, thing that I had there is uh, it fosters relationships during online school. Um, as I mentioned, um, students miss us. We meet them. We miss them. So it's nice to see each other's faces and to see each other's thoughts. And some of them are having rough times. We don't know exactly what's happening. So having them think of staying positive and uh, giving us examples to, uh, for them, what are they doing to feel good or to feel um, healthy? or uh, to feel strong. Maybe they're not doing it, but just because you're asking them, now they're gonna do it. Or maybe somebody is just saying, yeah, I'm sleeping enough hours. And then someone else is thinking, oh yeah, I'm spending too much time on the iPad. I should go to sleep early. And so just giving tips to each other, uh, but really worrying about how they're feeling and supporting them by telling them, oh yeah, that's great that you're doing that. What about you do this other thing? So, that, um, so as I said, it's a great tool to connect people and educators around the world. Uh, there's a few hashtags there in Twitter that you can use. Um, and also Flipgrid, one of the hashtag it has, it's called Grid Pals, and I just found, I just um, wrote down health and physical educators, and so 
it, it has to be people who want to be uh, shown. So you have to show like you're active and then that way you can connect with other people. But it's about all the topics. And it's, this presentation is um, a lot about primary because that's what I'm teaching right now. Uh, but Flipgrid has all the way from EY to university levels. And so you can connect with people that has like lots of different backgrounds that can, you can be interested. And so one of the important things as well is that it's free right now, which is great. Thank you Flipgrid, for doing that for us educators. And it's really easy to use. So I, I, um, I did a few um, hyperlinks there to get you started because I know not everybody knows about Flipgrid and if you don't know, most likely you're mm -hmm. watching this presentation. And they also have um, a new feature for, or a PDF for remote learning, which also helps you to send uh, information to your families and students if they never use Flipgrid before. And we did not use uh, Flipgrid at a, as a school, I use it. Uh, myself with my with my students two years ago, 2018. So the students were not prepped to do that, and they're doing great. So just as an advice, it's, it's not difficult. You just have to follow the direction. Okay, so we've been talking about the why, 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 but what is flavor really? So it is um, a simple way to foster short video. Um, that you can uh, have a discussion on, on classroom topics or whatever topic you want to have. Um, you can sign up at flipgrid.com and um, the families, the students, teachers, educators can use Flipgrid at home um, or at school. As I said, I use it at school uh, before in PE for volleyball and for gymnastics. Um, and right now I'm using it for different topics as well. We'll, we'll look at it later. I just um, got from the Flavory website itself just this very basic uh, graphic that you can read and look at. But basically what you have to do is you create a grid, you pass a topic uh, discussion, and then you share the link or the code with your students. And then when you create that, you create it with um, school email. That's an important tip to know, school email. So the students, uh, when they sign up, they get, they get to their uh, code and then they log in with a school email, which um, goes directly with the same password at the school. Nobody needs to do anything. And then there's like a plus sign and that's it. They can video there um, on the topic. So it's very simple. You need to see it, I know, um, and play with it. You create your grid and that's um, the students, personal learning community, staff, um, school, anybody's place to go and check their topics. So these are mine. I chose these pictures that are all um, most of them related with water, but um, they're all like sporty ones and they're all in flip grade. And so these are my classes. This year I teach grade one, grade three, and grade five. And so that's why, that's how I know um, which class um, I have to go to. So each class is a grade. And then within the grades, they have a topic. And so every week I send a new topic. And so the topics are the discussion props, the themes, the challenges that you set up for your great community. And it looks like that. So basically, um, you can play with the recording time and it goes up to 10 minutes now. So it's like one and a half, uh, two, two and a half, five and 10, something like that. You just have to click here and you see. And so it's good idea, um, so you have, you, want to have a title for your topic and it's a good idea to also add um, stimulus text or a provocation or what you want the students to do that so if it's a reflection you can add your questions for the reflection and 
whatever it is. And then you also have the focus. Um, and you can add a picture or uh, you can add like a short video, a GIF, all these things. So some emoji. So it makes it a little bit more fun. So I want you to think now for a minute. Take a minute to think what topic can I create for my classes? What are we doing right now in PE? What were... Uh, we, what would we do if we were at school? Are we doing the same thing? What is the homeroom doing? Um, can we link any of the activities they're doing, any of the concepts they're having? Um, so to get started with the topics, especially if the students never done it before, you want to think of something that hook your learners in. Um, something that comes in the first topic that's already in Flipgrid is just like say hi. Um, I had it hidden in some classes because I know the homeroom already started doing Flipgrid and so I didn't want to do the same thing. But um, you can just say say your name or, or introduce yourself and tell me your favorite activity or what has been your favorite activity so far during online school or what's your favorite sport or something that really just, it's easy for the students and they're gonna they're gonna hook in, they're gonna join the conversations um, also think of uh, something that they can make a short video and it doesn't have to be too long and um, maybe something related with the activity that you're doing so we use CISO uh, for all the activities that we share with students weekly um, so maybe it can be related with any of the activities that you're asking on, on CISO. Uh, maybe they can also do a short video, whatever you, you want. So think, make, um, take a few minutes to think of what would suit you. So this is an example of the three topics I had uh, for the grade three students. Uh, we did start with say hi and share your favorite uh, activity. Then we had the, three, the grade three dance performances where students had two weeks to share those videos. And so they could just share part of their dance. It didn't have to be a finished one. Um, and then eventually they will have to make the whole dance, which was super difficult or super um, challenging maybe for some. But um, the idea was to encourage them to, to try and do a performance um, using something that we call the creative cycle, something that we've been using at ISPT. And they've been um, learning in a, with the homeroom. So they were thinking of, of how to apply that into the dance, into the creative dance. And the last one I did was the Wellness Wonders, just to check how the students were doing and, and if they were uh, moving enough or, um, as I said, drinking enough water, eating well. And so then students go into the topics and they share. They respond by adding that plus sign and they just uh, take a short video of themselves depending on how long you set up. Uh, but it, they can make it shorter, obviously, and it gets shared with the great community. So everyone in that class would see uh, the videos, and if you share that code with teachers, uh, admin, they can also look and watch the videos and um, add their own or add, add, a, add a comment. Okay, so how does it work for my students? Um, it really is different in every grade level, but um, during online school, we've been using CISO, um, and we send the activities on Mondays, and it's like a choice board of different activities. They can do dance, they can do yoga, they can do. Um, and so for the first four weeks of online school, uh, that's the only thing I did. I didn't want to um, stress students and um, it's more like physical activities. 
And the idea was to encourage students to do a uh, physical activity though, every day, 60 minutes per day, and then share with us on Friday, um, sharing also like pictures and videos and a daily, like a weekly schedule of what they were doing. Um, so for example, Monday, uh, I went uh, running for 15 minutes and then I did a workout and so on. So th they were sharing, um, with videos, recording over uh, a weekly schedule, taking pictures, uh, lots of ways. But after four weeks of online school, I thought that wasn't enough. So, and I was missing my students and I was feeling like my students were missing us as well. Um, and I got inspired by grade one teachers. So my, my son is in grade one. And I saw how he was hooked, hooked with uh, Flipgrid and how he was really, they were doing um, lots of different activities with uh, Flipgrid, again, starting easy, introducing themselves, but also having them do riddles and try to figure out each other's riddles. And I saw how engaged he was and how... Um, he was looking for feedback from his teacher, first of all, and then also from, from the other students. And so I thought, I need to, to give it a try with B, and I'm going to start. So that's how I started doing it. And so I, I thought um, of what are we doing in, in P? If we were at school, what are we doing? So that's how the dance performance came um, into the spot as well um, for the grade three students and then checking in with the ones. So yeah, these are the three uh, teachers in, in grade one. And so that was just an example of a P challenge. So that week within the CISO activity, they had to also join um, the Flipgrid and and share something before i did that i checked with the with the grade one teachers because i didn't want to add too much to the students and they agreed that maybe not every week to do a free grade challenge but have the students giving it a try and so so we did and it's been great so far in grade level so in grade one they're doing how the world works living things unit and so for now, these are the topics I've been doing, wellness, um, activities, and healthy bodies. I'm going to change and, and I have another idea. Uh, in grade three, they're doing how we express ourselves and they're doing performances, so we're doing the dance. And then uh, we'll move on to a gymnastics one um, next week, most likely, because they'll be done with the dances and then we'll do a free brief for reflection and then we'll move to the next um, last unit. And then in grade five, they're doing the PYP exhibition. And um, I feel like some students are very stressed and overwhelmed with this. And so I thought, them, I thought I need to ask them to do a reflection on their learning. Are they, how are they doing in general with their learning, but also um, how are they doing with their use of time? Are they spending too much time sitting around? Are they sitting around? with their iPads and then really playing with something that is in their focus, are they being active and that helps them to be focused. So I, I send that reflection um, to kind of support them with their, with their exhibition. Uh, inspiring peer feedback is the second part of the presentation. And so I just uh, found a research and study from Nicole 2010 you can read it. Feedback is valuable when it's uh, received, understood, and acted on. Uh, how students analyze, discuss, and act on feedback is as important as the quality of feedback itself. I think that's an important uh, phrase, sentence, because if they don't listen to the feedback, it's not going to be helping them. If the feedback is not constructive, it's not... Uh, meaningful or timely is not going to help them either. So we really need to provide um, 
important good feedback, constructive feedback, and in a way that students are going to use that feedback. Because those interactions with feedback help students to understand and develop their learning. Um, how do we express ourselves um, units? And that's the inquiry into different ways to discover and express ideas and, and feelings. And for us in, um, in P was dance uh, to front load this unit and now gymnastics. So we have the central idea performance is influenced by purpose. And um, the reason why I'm adding that is because students creating created their own dances and share those on Flipgrid. And so the way they did it was um, sharing um, the videos, right? Like they, they chose their music and that's the only thing I put in the props. We started this unit in, in school, so they knew a little bit about it. Um, and we had much more, many more elements of dance. We don't have any here. Uh, but I thought I'll make it super simple for them to be able to create the dance. So just having a beginning, a middle, and end, and then having a number of movements and repeating a movement a number of times. I said eight, because that's what we did um, um, at school. And um, I also said that it would be a good idea after you upload your video to watch the ones from your peers to give them positive feedback. So when I checked their videos, there was some feedback. It was positive, but I realized that that wasn't enough. Uh, because it's, it's not enough motivation. If you tell the students only, okay, uh, why don't you give them positive feedback? Then uh, they're going to say, oh, that your dance was awesome. Thank you. Uh, you, you were dancing so good. And it's, it's, not, it's not meaningful enough. It's great for a student to receive that kind of feedback because they're going to feel like, wow, my dance was so good. I'm so happy. But is this going to help them to get better at whatever they were doing? So um, I think that to inspire peer feedback, we have to teach it. And we need to show it and we need to model it and we need to give some examples. So we had a meeting, a Zoom meeting with the grade five team. And so the EAL teacher um, thought that she could provide some stems and stems, stems um, that were consistent across single subjects. So something that she was saying is like, um, I really like how, um, your, blah, 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 uh, they were very creative, or I was impressed by, or you had such a good, this kind of thing. So that really helped, um, that will really help students to, to kind of create their own um, feedback. I did a little bit of a research and found out from Hari um, and uh, Nicole, and their books are here, um, the importance of feedback. So I was mentioning constructive feedback, highlights the strengths and weaknesses of a giving, given piece of work, and um, set of ways in which students, the student can improve the work. So it's really important to have those thoughts in mind that the feedback needs to be constructive. It has to be timely as well, because if you give feedback too late, it's not going to be fresh in the student's mind. And it has to be meaningful, targeting individual needs and should be linked to specific um, assessment criteria. So it, it makes sense for the students. Some other ideas that you could do to inspire um, people to send feedback is to have a humble teacher support. I was really lucky with the dance performances and the grade three teacher, I didn't have to ask him anything. He was right there all the time. 
and giving feedback using the success criteria, which was awesome, uh, really positive. And the students did create more, more than one dance. So it, it did uh, create a big impact. Also acknowledging the students who are commenting on each other and thanking them for doing that. Uh, we had that at the beginning, just having the, the, uh, in the props, oops, uh, ask the students to, to send positive feedback or give tips to do something. So the tips are more related with the wellness, for example. And then modeling and sending feedback based on the, on the criteria to every student. Uh, there's also other ways to send individual feedback that are featured on on CISO, oh, on Flipgrid, sorry. So for this, you need to be signed up um, as an educator because if you look at your grid and you are viewing it as a, as a student, you don't get this screen. But if you sign up as an educator, then you just get that. And so this first part here where I put awesome dance, it says um, leave a vibe. And so on the student's video, it would show whatever you write, whatever you type. So if you click here, you can just like, it shows up here um, what you can write down. I just wrote down awesome dance or outstanding. Very simple. You don't have space to do more than that. You could send a video feedback that goes only to the student. And um, in Flipgrid, it has like a grading rubric and it comes with already ideas and performance, but you can edit your uh, criteria and change it to wherever you want. And then you can also start the response, first star here. And so it goes um, at the top of the grid. Um, in order to get, in order to get um, a big impact on feedback, you need to choose a topic that is going to help you to provide that feedback. Okay, so I'm just going to show you a video of this student, who's my son actually, and um, he was really into sending feedback, and so he got feedback from another student, and he got um, really engaged into that. And so he sent a few videos to others, and um, he was telling me, yeah, so these students send me feedback, I'm going to send him feedback too. So that's also a point that when it starts, it spreads. So here we go. Okay, so to make your, make your um, feel better, and you are very smart because you, I hope you've been eating healthy food. Drinking lots of water and, and also exercising. Thanks for thanks thanks for sharing how thanks for sharing healthy foods. Okay. Um, more ideas I have up here are related. So in grade one, we're moving into life cycles and gymnastics. So when the students uh, they're doing living things. Something that I did at school last year was um, life cycles and gymnastics. So I was thinking of as soon as the teachers teach that, maybe I can ask the students to pretend they're an animal and they can video themselves doing that. Grade three, we're moving to reflection on performances with the dances and then eventually with um, the gymnastics. And in grade five, it's going to be the learner profile challenges that we started already um, last week. And so this idea is inspired on my colleague, Ben Wiggins, who was a UAP teacher, um, he said, educator at ISP as well. So he sent that to, the, to all the students in grade four. Um, and I thought I would do it with grade fives as well. I just changed a few. And so students can can share. Um, you can do it whatever way you want, but they can they can do one a day, or they can do four a week, or five per week, or they can do all of them. So 
just uh, to give you an idea of how can you be a communicator by sharing your activity. So how can you be principled, respecting others and yourself as you play different games? Or how can you be caring? Um, are you looking after your body? Are you being active at least uh, 20 minutes uh, per day, every day, making your heart beating, this kind of thing? So there's like basic ideas, again, related with wellness, but because we're a PYP school, um, we're on a profile related with uh, physical education. <laughs> <笑>私だと思われるからやめてくれる<笑> <頑張るから。笑> lots of um, resources in Flibri. Uh, there's something called this collaborate where you can find topics from educators all over the world that add um, ideas there, so you can just like start um, your topic just by, by grabbing those. Um, I would say start small, play with it, and learn a lot. And so just um, last ideas here, Flipgrid can be used uh, with anyone, so again, even if I'm sharing this with you um, as an um, elementary PE teacher right now, can be used in uh, middle school, high school. Um, it depends on your topics and how you how you provide the information to the students, what you want them to be doing and sharing with you. Um, we also did it as part of social wellness, uh, checking it with colleagues, and we got uh, from admin new movie recommendations. So teachers were just like sharing. Uh, the last movies they were watching, especially during this online school time where we spend lots of time inside. Maybe you don't know what else to watch when you want to relax a little bit. And don't think of work and it's late. You cannot go outside anyways. anyways. Um, or have you tried something new? Any topic, again. So just uh, this can be shared with anyone. Just to close... For you to remember, relationships matter. Uh, student voice matters. And we need to remember to keep the learner as a center because that's how they create their own learning. And feedback, it's very important. And so that's why I, wrote that, I, I added that uh, quote. Feedback is an important part of the assessment process it has a significant effect on student learning and has been described as the most powerful single moderator that enhance, enhance, enhances achievement, sorry, for my reading skills. Hadi, um, 19.9. Okay. Um, thank you so much for your time, for listening to me. I hope you found something meaningful in this presentation, something that can help you, um, and especially help your students. Now, during online school, 
and eventually at school as well. Bye. Have a great day.